Okay, because we don't have any electricity this morning, I'm delivering the lecture this way. So I'm going to go into Model 6 Notes. And we're talking about functions. Now, there's a number of functions that you've been using all along, int, float, string, type, etc. And these things are like mathematical functions. That is, if you put in the same input, you always get the same output. Okay, so we're not talking about these really. And we want to talk about uh, defining functions. So I want you to run the code in the cell below and see if anything happens. Okay, so pause the video <clears throat> while you're working on this and write this function up and run it, just run this code and see what if anything happens. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute. Okay, did you see anything happen? Well, no. And the point that I'm making is that when you define a function, it doesn't run the function. To run the function, you have to type print underscore lyrics as a command. So run it twice. And what happens when you run it twice? It works. You see the uh, print that is defined within the body of the function. Okay. So let's talk about <coughs> defining a functions. Defining, <coughs> sorry, defining a function. There are a bunch of points you have to be careful of. You always begin with a keyword def, D-E-F. Then you have a name, and the name is followed by parentheses, which may contain nothing. And the line ends with a colon. And then the following lines are indented and define the action performed by the function when it is called. So I want you to experiment by breaking each of these rules and observing the response of the interpreter. I just want you to get used to seeing what happens when you break the rules. So I'm going to pause the recording for a few minutes. Okay, so presumably you're used to now to seeing what happens when you uh, break the rules for defining a function. Now most of the time uh, functions are created with parameters and that allows their behavior to change depending on the needs of the user. And here's an example of a function which computes the area of a circle with a given radius. So we have a parameter r, and it calculates the area, and then it returns the area. When you call a function with the value 2, it is referred to as an argument. When the function is called with an argument, the body of the function is executed with the argument replacing the parameter. So here's what we did. We, because we're using math.py, we have to import math. So I defined circle, under areas, circle underscore area. There's the name. There's the parentheses, and it contains a single parameter. And Area is math times pi times whatever the is given as r squared and return the area. And now I run the function by including it within a print statement, print circle underscore area of 2. So 2 is now the argument. And when you run this function to accomplish this, the 2 replaces the r and you get the area of a circle uh, with radius 2. So I want you to call this function in two ways. One is just use the function as a command. Second is to store the value computed by the function with the call to the function on the right side of an assignment statement. And I'll stop the video for a few minutes and let you do that. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> if I just run it as a command, I say circle underscore area of 2, it just 
simply displays itself, displays the value produced by the function circle underscore area when it is given an argument of 2. If I say area underscore 2 is circle underscore area of 2, then the same computation is done, but the value is just placed in area underscore 2, and the result is not displayed. So we have to distinguish between fruitful and void functions. <coughs> the fruitful function has a return statement and it returns a value. Uh, if a function doesn't have a return statement, it will return something, but it is the value none. So I want you to take the circle underscore area above, delete the return statement, replace it with a print statement, and test it with an input of 2. And I'll pause the video for a few minutes while you do this. Okay, you're back. So note that there's no, re there's no uh, return in this function, so I've made it void. But the function does provide the user with a value through the print statement. So if I run circle underscore area of 2, what I get is the result of the print. Okay? But what's the value returned by a, a void function? Well, right now, circle underscore area of 2 is void. So I said x is circle underscore area of 2. And the function runs. The print statement within the function produces this value. But then when I say print x, what I get is the value none. And the class of x, or the type of x, is of the none type. OK, so here's a good exercise. And I'll just let you uh, read this exercise and then pause the video while you're working on it. And then we'll come back and I'll talk about it. OK, let's take a look at that. It's very simple, the function. Uh, it takes four parameters, a, b, c, and x, and you just compute the result as a times x squared plus b times x plus c, and then you return the result. And actually, I could have just returned the expression. I didn't really have to set it aside as a result. So here's the test. OK. So I want you to repeat the exercise above. It made your function quad v a, b, c, x void within the function. Print out the values of all the variables with identifying text. OK. And pause the video, of course, for a few minutes while you uh, do that. OK. Let's take a look at that. Note that as you look in the body of the function, there is no return statement, and that's what makes this function void. Uh, so it delivers its result through print statements, and it's got copious print statements. Uh, you identify all of the uh, incoming arguments, and then you uh, show the computed result. OK. And it works. So <clears throat> now I want you to create a function which is fruitful, and it's divisible, m comma n. And it returns true if m is divisible by n. Otherwise, it returns false. And then test it with 4 comma 2, which should return true, and 5 comma 3, which should return false. So go ahead and 
pause the video and work on that. It'll probably take you four or five minutes. Okay, so you're back. So let's go ahead. So the computation is really simple. M divided, or M uh, modulo N is equal to zero, tells you that M is divisible by N. So you're returning this, the value of this Boolean expression. And if I print divisible four comma two, I get true, divisible five comma three, I get false. Okay. So take a look at that, pause the video if you need to, and think it through. Make sure you understand why it works. So here's a, <clears throat> this, I've heard that this uh, particular example is used frequently on uh, coding interviews. And it's the FizzBuzz example. So we'll call it FB of N. And it returns Fizz if N of is divisible by three but not by five. It returns buzz if n is divisible by 5 but not by 3, and it returns fizzbuzz if n is divisible by both, and if n is not divisible by either, it returns shucks. So I want you to test it with 6, which is divisible by 3, 7, which is divisible by uh, nothing. 10, which is divisible by 5, and 15, which is divisible by 5 and 3. So please uh, pause the video while you write that. Okay. I'm recording. I am recording. So this is the this is code that works. If it's divisible by three and five, it returns fizzbuzz. Elif divisible n comma three return fizz. Elif divisible n comma five return buzz. Else return shucks, and it returns all of the correct values. So repeat exercise four, but use no elif, no elif or else statement, just if. And again, pause the video while you do that. Okay, let's take a look and see how we did that. Here's the code which uh, uses just ifs, no elifs, and no else. And this code is uh, maybe not very elegant, but it's very readable in that it repeats exactly the specifications that you're uh, that you were requiring of the function. Again, take a look at this and make sure that you understand how it works. Pause the video, of course, if it's necessary. It probably is necessary. Oh, let's see. Did I miss something? Nope. Okay. Exercise five. Uh, this is about whether or not we can sleep in. Parameter weekday is true if it is a weekday, and the parameter vacation is true if we are on vacation. And we sleep in if it is not a weekday or we're on vacation, return true if we sleep in. And here's the header of the function, def sleep underscore in, weekday comma vacation. And little typo here, I missed the uh, right parentheses. And this is what you should be getting. 
for these combinations, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Okay, and again, uh, pause the video while you are working on that. Okay. Really pretty simple. If not weekday or vacation, return true, else return false. And here are all the tests, and it returned the correct results. And pause the video for a few minutes and look at this. Make sure that you understand why it worked. So that work, <clears throat> can you do it with one line of code? Yeah, you, you could do this easily with one line of code. Okay. So pause the video for a, a minute while you work on that. Okay, you're back. So let's go on and look at this thing. Return, not weekday or vacation. These parentheses here are superfluous. Uh, I really shouldn't have put them in there, but y you can try it without the parentheses and make sure that it works. So you, what you're returning is the Boolean expression, not weekday or vacation. And again, it produces the correct values. Okay, monkey trouble. Two monkeys, A and B, and the parameters are A smile and B smile, indicate if each is smiling and they're Boolean. We're in trouble if they're both smiling or if neither of them is smiling. Return true if we are in trouble. And here's the header of your function, def monkey trouble, A smile comma B smile colon, and here are the uh, requirements. These are the tests. So go ahead and write your function. Pause the video, of course, while you're while you're writing. Then come back here and take a look and look at my solution. Okay, you're back. So let's look at my solution. <clears throat> so if a smile and b smile return true. If not a smile and not b smile, return true. Otherwise, you return false. Uh, note that you don't need an else because if if a smile and b smile, then you return true. When you return, as soon as you hit a return, you leave the body of the function. And that is why this particular code structure works. So do this in one line of code. Okay. A little bit of a challenge. So stop the video while you think about it and do it in a single line of code. Okay, you're back. Let's take a look at the single line of code. So I return the value of a Boolean expression. And again, these outer parentheses are not necessary and try running without them. But the inner parentheses are necessary. A smile and B smile, or not A smile and not B smile. And that is all that you're really doing. So again, uh, pause the video while you examine this uh, code and make sure that you understand why it works. Do without an and or an or. Exercise 6b. So take the code from the pre preceding thing and do it without an and or an or. 
and of course you're going to pause the video while you work on it and then come back start the video again and look at my solution okay you're back so let's look at my solution and it really is very simple you simply return the value of the boolean expression that a smile is equal to b smile if those are true either because both are true or both are false uh, then you return a true okay again look at the code and think about it and understand why it works uh, pause the video while you're thinking about it and let's go on so given two int values return their sum unless the two values are the same then return double their sum so the function the name of the function is sum underscore double it has two parameters an a and a b and here are some test values note that it just returns the sum for three and two but when you had both the same it returned double the sum okay so pause the video and uh, write your function and then come back and look at it look at my solution okay you're back so you must have succeeded and let's take a look at my function So here is the function. We store the sum in a local variable. Sum is a plus b. And then if a is equal to b, then we multiply the sum by 2 and we return the sum. And here are the test values and it returned the correct values. Okay, so look at this code. Make sure that you understand why it works. Pause the video while you're working on it, or while you're looking at it. Okay, let's go on to the next exercise. So given an int n, return the absolute difference between n and 21, except return double the absolute difference if n is over 21. So here's the header of the function. Here are the test cases. And pause the video while you work on creating your own function diff21. OK, you're back. You must have convinced yourself that you've got the code correctly. So let's take a look at my solution. So if n is less than or equal to 21, then you return 21 minus n. And if, if otherwise, if n is not less than or equal to 21, then you return n minus 21 times 2. And if you look at all the test cases, they came out correct. OK, look at this code. Make sure you understand why it works. Pause the video while you're working on it or while you're looking at it. And now let's go on to the next exercise. We have a loud talking parrot. And the hour parameter is the current time in the range 0 through 23. We're in trouble if the parrot is talking and the hours before 7 or after 20. And return true if we were in trouble. And here is the header of the function. And here are four test cases. So <clears throat> pause the video. 
create your function, then come back and look at my solution. Okay, you're back, so let's take a look at my solution. And we just re return uh, the value of the Boolean expression, talking, and our less than 7 or our greater than 20. And note the way we parenthesize the Boolean expression. And here are the four test cases, and it works in every case. So that's the end of part one of today's notes.